Hi guys, welcome back to XUK here with another vid. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any time, you'll know I'm not just a role player. I do wargaming and I used to be a bit of a card gamer. Um, and I thought it might be a nice break from doing all the various role playing games that I've played to include some of these other games. And um, today is the first one of these vids. I am especially these days, a little bit more of a war gamer. And I play Warhammer 40k. And I actually started that with the very first edition back in 1987, when it was called uh, Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader, or RT, as they tend to refer it now. Um, I had only just studied being a role player. My friend Chris at school had got me into playing Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. And I'd started collecting White Dwarf magazine because it used to have some very good articles, scenarios and the like for the roleplay game. And um, in sort of like early 87, they started putting out some articles uh, with regards to this new war game they're putting out uh, called Warhammer 40,000 Road Trader. They already did Warhammer, or as we know it now, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, which is its third edition at the time. And this was a science fiction version of that, essentially. Um, and my friend Chris and I went down to Games Day 1987, which was the weekend it was released. We went down on the Saturday and we got our copies. So opening weekend, we've got it. Um, I mentioned in my conventions video a few weeks back that um, I'd done this. I picked up the rule book. I picked up the original plastic Beaky Marine box set and um, the uh, metal Space Hawk box set. Um, I remember that quite uh, vividly because the orcs were all kind of done up like well, the only way I can describe it was sort of like World War Two German tank guys. You know, they had those little desert caps and things like that. And I always thought it was quite cool. <laughs> they looked lovely models, um, very out of scale with what we have now. But you know, um, and Warhammer Forty K Road Trader was essentially the same system that Warhammer Fantasy 3rd Edition used. So it's basically the system that we have had ever since, um, but it has a lot more stats. So you didn't just have like your weapon skill, your ballistic skill, strength, toughness, whatever. you had things like uh, cool and willpower. Um, and uh, unlike now where you've got about eight stats, you had about 12 back then, and some of them were fairly pointless. Um, but I loved the setting. I loved what they've done with it. It was basically fantasy in space. Because you had your orcs, you had your Eldar, which were your space elves, you had squats, which were your space dwarves, you got your space orcs, to so say. Um, space marines were basically knights. Um, Chaos didn't exist at this point. It was some probably a couple of years later when Realms of Chaos was released that Chaos was introduced along with uh, Grey Knights as armies um, and the very setting was very different to what we have now essentially the core of it was there but it was very tongue-in-cheek and if any of you know of the old 2000 AD comic where Judge Dredd and the like originally came from it was very for a comic it was very satirical um, and a lot of it was kind of a, a little bit of a, a piss take on uh, modern society and things like that and this was kind of very much the same um, you could certainly see those elements had, become, had been designed into the setting uh, space marines were genetically modified psycho indoctrinated nut jobs but there was a little bit more humanity to them I think in Rogue Trader um, there's a, and you can see where things were building. Originally, like the the so-called Eye of Terror was just a warp story. It was nothing special back then, until the Realms of Chaos books came out. And there was a whole little bit in the back of the book, little cartoons, um, like little images with a caption or something. And one of them was like when you know when the Eye of Terror um, fades periodically, as it does. Imperial forces go in and sort of uh, uh, turn the lawlessness back into order. And it had space marines basically doing police patrol and stuff like this. And there's like a, a 
juvie punk ganger with a Mohican spraying Marines go home on a wall and these Marines with batons basically, you know, putting him up against the wall and, you know, arresting him. Um, uh, and things like that. It wasn't, it wasn't anywhere near the grim dark that you have in the game now. Um, and I kind of like that. Some of the there was even this really cool thing in the back of the rules um, for scenario generation because Rogue Trader wasn't designed like a normal war game. It was actually designed to be partly a role play, and you would have a referee for essentially a uh, games master uh, who would come up with scenario ideas, um, and it would even suggest um, building the lists and having the you know, the players would play that and the scenario. And it had this uh, huge, like I think it was like four sides, two, two and a half pages essentially, of um, tables where you could randomly come up with scenarios. Um, so you could have something that you'd never have now. You could end up with a scenario, scenario like, um, um, let's think of a random thing, um, Eldar... Uh, forces had abducted the daughter of the planetary governor and was holding her for ransom um, and uh, orc mercenaries had been hired to recover her you know, you know it's the sort of thing that just doesn't make sense in the current uh, incarnation of the universe but it made perfect sense back then um, you know Tyranids weren't a playable race they were a monster there was a whole bestiary in the back of the book but again if you wanted to be doing that you could have Tyranids um, attacking a mining station for fuel um, and um, it could be something like the Imperial Guard as they were then um, with the defenders trying to hold them off and the two is one if they managed to siphon enough fuel away or something like that you know it, it wasn't the direct war game that we have now um, as you can probably guess I look at Road Trader with some very rose-tinted glasses. I have great nostalgia for the, for the for the days of that, um, but it doesn't hold up now. <laughs> um, I still have a copy of that rule book. It's not my original one. My original one fell apart after a couple of years. Um, I managed to buy a cheap um, but intact copy about ten years ago, um, which sits on a shelf and occasionally gets read and looked through and fond memories. But I remember my friend Chris and I only probably played about six games in the, what, 87, 88, three, three and a bit years, four, um, that we were at school together. Um, I originally was doing Space Marines and these Orcs. Um, when Realms of Chaos came out, I decided to go with a Chaos Army. I decided to go with Black Legion because it was easy to paint. You just spray it black and dry brush it silver. <laughs> Do the guns in a sort of silver and red. Um, bish, bash, bosh, done. Um, but I never got, to, I had quite a, a, a sizable, probably about a 1500 point Black Legion army, but I never actually got to play a game with them. Um, but it was the core, pardon me, it was the core of where Warhammer 40k would go. Um, and I say it, hold, it does hold a lot of memories for me and a lot of fondness. And I kind of sometimes miss the universe of that uh, edition. Uh, when my friend Chris left for university, I basically gave up on it because I had nobody else to play. Nobody else um, that I knew of really played it. Um, a few people that played Epic, um, what was then Adeptus Titanicus and Space Marine, um, collectively known as Epic. But again, not enough that I'd get to really play it. And so I continued on with role playing, which meant that I skipped second edition 40k. And um, all I can say to that is thank goodness, because second edition was, I know it's got a, a, a bit of a following, there are people that like it, but when I got my hands on a copy of the rules and read through it and looked at the codices and things such as they were, it was absolutely atrocious. It was horrendous. And quite frankly, I think they went. Games Workshop went very much the wrong way. Um, essentially, the, 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 they tweaked the system. The system was slightly different, but still, you know, if you knew Road Trader, you could play it. 
but they really went to town on because there was some really weird you didn't just have d6s you had some things that added d8s or d4s or, or, or whatever um and it was the addition that created what it and uh fourth edition war fantasy called hero hammer which was basically you had your units and they were standard pretty much like they were in rogue trader but your characters your named individuals were like 10 times better you know a normal guy might have a single attack uh, a sergeant might have two three maybe if he has a special weapon or something but your characters would come in with eight to ten attacks they would always like be hitting on twos effectively or you know um and they would have twinky weapons that would basically deny you an armor save and essentially characters would stride through um on the battlefield stride through lines stride through units uh and it was it was seriously overpowered if you were playing an army that didn't have a named character you were pretty much stuffed um second edition is also one where i think they started to codify where they wanted the universe to go they tried to get away from that weird 2000 ad styly um although a small problem with uh, them losing all the models um, if I remember correctly, don't you know? Jump me on this. This is just as I recall and what I remember reading um, was that somebody uh, left the company, left Games Workshop, and it was part of their contract or something that the models that the heavy metal team had were effectively theirs. So they left, taking all them with them. So gone were the cool, dark, grim, dark-looking models to be replaced by new models that didn't look as good and were rush painted with very bright colours, probably to get them out with the release. But it didn't look right, it never looked right. If you look at models from second edition, everything is bright, there's no sort of like washes, there's no sort of dark tones. And it didn't look right. Um, as I say, I know second edition has a bit of a following, there are people that like it. I, I can't. I couldn't stand it. I could never play that after having read through the rules. Never played a game of it, but reading through the rules, it was atrocious, absolutely horrid. Um, I came back at the end of third edition, um, and I'll deal with that in another vid. Um, so that's just my thoughts on Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader and second edition. Uh, did you play that game at all? Um, what, are you, what were your thoughts? Do you have the same sort of nostalgic memories that I do? Um, or, you know, did you think it was a terrible system, a terrible game? Whatever. Let me know. I'd be interested to see your thoughts. Likewise, if you enjoyed the vid, please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe if you like the content. And uh, I look forward to seeing your comments. Until then, take care, guys, and good gaming.